time when there's got to be a change. People in power have misused it, and now there has to be a change, and a better world has to be built, and the only way it's going to be built is with extreme methods. And I, for one, will join in with anyone, don't care what color you are, as long as you want to change this miserable condition that exists on this earth. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Many books have been written addressing the issue of ancient human cultures having contact with extraterrestrial civilizations. The hypothesis that these alien visitors are very possibly the source of our own physical origin, as well as our cultural evolution. Such books have approached the topic by quoting and analyzing excerpts from the Old Testament based on established translations such as the King James Version, the Bible we all know. Is there a chance to learn more, go deeper, transform our current assumptions into certainties? and have accurate feedback. Starting from the original Hebrew, the ancient text of the Old Testament, this translation has now been simplified. In the pages that follow, we will publish the exact and literal meanings of each letter and phrase in Hebrew, translated into English. Hence, the surprise for hypotheses that the Church cannot avow because they would undermine the foundations of faith, a made-up, credo, which speaks of God who created the man with his own image and resemblance. Holy Bible aliens those passages that clearly mention the presence of alien life and extraterrestrial intervention are quoted in the original Hebrew language followed by an accurate little translation. Word by word, using a unique and easy to follow graphic system that immediately links to the original text. This enables the reader to have direct access to the biblical text. Modern day Judeo-Christian traditions will probably never acknowledge this information to the public as it would tear down the facade of their man-made invention of one all-knowing, all-seeing God who created mankind. Once that facade is gone, the structures that we now know as Christianity, Judaism, are likely to crumble down right along with it. The implications are staggering. In the pages that follow, we will examine Ezekiel's vision of a celestial chariot, UFO, and the story of Elijah's kidnapping, abduction. In addition, we will analyze the visions of Zechariah, the Kirat, the so-called God's glory, the concept of Raka, and also the biblical passages relating to angels. Perhaps most interestingly, you will be able to read the little translation of the verses which describe the creation of man, a translation that can confirm a surprising, fascinating and unexpected possible truth, considering the book at issue, the Bible. Finally, we will look at another passage in the Old Testament which includes the disconcerting statement, God dies. An easy reading this work stems from a careful analysis of the text, relying on the original meaning of consonant roots which represent the basis of the Hebrew vocabulary, as published in the dictionaries of Biblical and Aramaic Hebrew used worldwide. To date, these original meanings have been either generally not examined or deliberately not taken into account. You will also read about the assertions of those church exponents who deal with these issues that are extremely delicate and potentially risky to Jewish Christian theology. This work is complemented by the analysis of external documentation, texts and stories that confirm what the Old Testament Bible tells us. This examination of the little translations from the original Hebrew text, which include the exact passages quoted, makes this translation useful to both the scholar as well as to the reader who is approaching this material for the first time. The book closes with a hypothetical reconstruction of historical events formulated on the basis of the new information. We present a new history of the new man which arises out of us now having direct access to the original source of the text. The chapters of this book are constructed so that the reader can study them also be read separately without the need to follow the numerical sequence and can therefore be used as an easy means of comparison and reference. A fundamental question this exegesis gives birth to a legitimate fundamental question if the God described in the Bible is not a spiritual and transcendent God but instead an extraterrestrial visitor, or visitors, should we still refer to this information as divinely inspired, or as sacred, texts? From where and from whom do they originate? In the tenth chapter when we plunge into the canonical Christian text that is universally regarded as the most mystical and inspired, the Gospel of John, here again the reader may be surprised to learn some additional information which will allow him or her to continue on this journey, a free path of correct knowledge. Have a good trip. 
Here follows a free and independent reconstruction of a hypothetical sequence of events resulting from the integration on the official histories with information and data contained in the texts of the authors listed in the bibliography. Contradictions or inconsistencies can occur here and there, since scholars don't always agree. Much of the information is obviously not supported by historically proven evidence or documentation. Therefore the reconstruction must be considered as a pure example of how history would have been if this book's assumptions revealed it to be true. Four billion years ago the clash of Nibiru, large outer planet drawn by Sumerians on their boards, with Tiamat, Earth, it gave birth to both the Earth, as we know it today, and the asteroid belt. Nibiru is captured in a solar orbit and transmits to the Earth the seed of life. 14 to 2 million years ago isolation of the branch that from apes will lead to the human species. The first features of hominids appears, the genetic traits that distinguish gorillas and chimps from men detach. Homo habilis appears. 1.5 million years ago Homo erectus, the first true hominid using stone tools, through Sinai he emigrates from Africa to Southeast Asia and Southern Europe. 600-100,000 years ago Lower Paleolithic. 450,000 years ago 50 Anunnaki descent on Earth from Nibiru led by Anki. They splash down in the Arabian Gulf, where they make their first allocation, Eridu, the home of the far world. 430-400,000 years ago Enlil arrives on Earth and founds Nippur, where he establishes the control center in Nippur. The number of Anunnaki rises to 600. 400-360,000 years ago the Biblical Nephilim found Bad Tabira as a center for the fusion of metal. 300,000 years ago the Anunnaki who work in South African mines rebel and demand to be replaced in the extraction work. Possible ruins of minings in South Africa. The first experiments in genetic engineering take place, starting from Homo erectus. In order to create a species of primitive workers, 300-250,000 years ago there is a second phase of genetic manipulation by which the Anunnakis furnish humans with the ability to procreate by themselves, the knowledge, but they are not given the longevity gene immortality. 230-180,000 years ago Neanderthal man is born, tools and physical features are still very similar to those used by Australopithecus 2 million years earlier. Homo erectus becomes sapiens. Adam and Eve may have been created around 180,000 years ago or in this period, they have moved to Eden and here received the genetic ability to procreate, thanks to Enki the snake god. 150,000 years ago Eno son of Seth, Adam and Eve's third son, was born and they began to invoke the name of the Lord. And men started moving to Middle East Asia, Mesopotamia. 137-133,000 years ago geneticists attribute this period to the appearance of the mitochondrial Eve, a female that, since then, has always and anyhow had at least one female child to which her mitochondrial heritage has perpetuated. 115-80,000 years ago Middle Paleolithic. In the Bible we read about Tabalcain, of antediluvian lineage, who forged tools of copper and iron. The farmer Cain kills his brother Abel, a shepherd. Cain's descendants become the creators of civilization, cities, metalworking. The Sons of God, walk on the earth and join with human females thus generating the biblical Nephilim. In this period individuals created by gods live very long. Traces of human settlements in Swaziland and Zululand. Traces of mining areas in South Africa. A direct evolution of Homo sapiens is Cro-Magnon, sapiens sapiens, Neanderthals emigrate, expulsion of Cain. Sapiens sapiens is the man we know as civilized. Was it then that they began to invoke the name of God? General 4, 26, 70,000 years ago Noah was born. There is the Ice Age. 60,000 years ago traces of mining areas in South Africa. The discovery of a Neanderthal's heoid bone from Mount Caramel, Israel, reveals that he could articulate words. 50-10,000 years ago Upper Paleolithic. The period is characterized by the last Ice Age worm, and the differentiation of the major races, negroids, mongoloids, europoids and australoids. 
49,000 years ago Isaiah Sudra's Sumerian reign begins, he is the biblical, Noah, Enki's faithful servant. 38-13,000 years ago in this period the Earth's climate conditions are particularly unfavorable. This situation is described by scholars in Sumerian tablets that tell of seven particularly adverse share, 25,200 years. Share are periods of 3,600 years. The Sumerian number system is based on the number 60, submultiple of 3,600. At the end of the Ice Age, Enlil decides to erase mankind taking advantage of what is about to happen. The Anunnaki leave the Earth, which is being destroyed by the Flood. The three sons of Noah, whose mother belongs to a different ethnic groups, are born, Shem, Ham and Japheth. Traces of mining areas in South Africa. The Homo sapiens of Cro-Magnon, sapiens sapiens, proliferates in Europe supplanting Neanderthals. 21,000 years ago according to Manetto, this is the period when it begins the Kingdom of Ta, in Egypt, it lasted 9,000 years and afterwards his son was sat on the throne for a thousand years. Meanwhile, after the flood Enki returned to drain the territories, the myth says that Enki went to Nubia and Ethiopia to make them habitable. After Rashu reigned for 700 years, Geb for 500, Osiris, Ra's great-grandson, for 450, Seth for 350 and Horus for 300. Then follows about three centuries of confusion, interrupted by the historical dynasties of king pharaohs. The Bible tells of patriarchs' longevity, how long could such beings live? whose biological clock was set to a planetary rotation equal to 3,600 earthly years, that means that one life year of theirs corresponded to 3,600 life years of ours. 13,000 years ago Homo sapiens spread throughout the entire planet. 12,000 years ago end of the last glaciation. During the flood about 11,000 BC, Enlil wants to destroy humanity, but Enki Sukids in saving his protege, he warns Isadra slash Noah and makes him build a vessel capable of withstanding the water. After the flood agriculture develops. 11,000 years ago after the flood the Anunnaki decided to split the territory into four regions, three of which are assigned to men, Egypt, Mesopotamia and Indus. The fourth is a sacred one and therefore is reserved for gods, Tilmyun, the place of the flying machines, after the flood, humankind received the scientific knowledge. Somewhere in the Middle East we record the domestication of animals and the first production of grain whose selection seems to have taken place in very little time, maybe in the Anunnaki Eden. 10,500 BC according to many current scholars, Hancock, von Däniken. This is when the pyramids of Giza were built and the Sphinx was placed to indicate the Tilmum, the east side of Sinai. 10,000-5,000 BC in Mesopotamia the Mesolithic began. Men use axes, spears and knives made of silica, molded stone, and start using flint. They begin to domesticate animals and to grow plants thus giving birth to the first forms of agriculture. Mesolithic culture expands into Palestine, El Nadaf and Jericho's cultures. 7,500 BC in the Middle East they start working with clay. Egypt is ruled by semi-gods. According to Manaton, the period of semi-gods runs approximately from 7,100 to 3,450. 6,000 BC according to the New Histories, this millennium sees the migration from Eden, Eden and the colonization of Summer first and then Egypt later at the hands of the descendants of the first people, created by gods and saved from the flood. Cain, the Akkadian Kian, Adamu's son is exiled to the land of Nod. 5000 BC here starts the Neolithic period. The megalithic culture spreads in Spain, France and England. The first agricultural community is born, farmers and herdsmen start living together. Farmers first settle in villages and then in houses and settlements, towns, built within walls. The power is centralized and a stratified social structure takes shape, kings, priests, Soldiers, artisans, merchants, peasants, slaves. The first monumental civilization was established along the larger rivers, Tigris, Euphrates, Nile, Indus and Huanghi. Mesopotamia is ruled by priest kings. According to New Histories, the biblical Enoch, 
the Akkadian Hanu, reached the land of Shinar, Summer and builds the early cities, Eridu, where kingship descended from heaven. Therefore, the first king seems to have been a biblical patriarch. 4500 BC in this V millennium, Genesis records the people's migration from the north of Mount Zagros, eastern Iraq, to lower Mesopotamia, later called the land of Shinar, in the Bible. 4000 BC after a period of cultural and artistic stagnation and regression, almost suddenly Sumerian civilization appears. Men become builders of cities and keen in mathematics, astronomy and metalworking techniques. 3800 BC here appears the biblical figure of Nimrod, the Sumerian in Merkar, great-grandson of Noah, descendant of Hivites, therefore African, god-slave and great builder. The gods begin the reconstruction of the cities destroyed by the flood, Baalbek had been rebuilt shortly after the disaster, and then to follow Eridu, 3800, Nippur, 3800 to 3700, Babylon, 3450, Agadir, 2400, Nineveh, 2300. In the Middle East, the processing of metal, copper, was developed. 3750 BC Anu, the lord of the empire, descends on earth. Sumerian texts describe the pomp with which the event was celebrated. 3670 BC the space bases transfer the command to earth. This event signifies the beginning of both Sumerians' days counting and of the Jewish calendar. 3500 BC in summer people start using the energy produced by oil. Sumerian language has names for all bitumen derived substances. This period dates back to some statuettes depicting Inanna and God's messengers with tech clothing, backpacks, caps, goggles, helmets. 3450 BC there are many wars among gods along with several attempts to take control, according to the alternative hypothesis they were aimed at building a spaceport in Babylon, the Tower of Babel. With regard to the biblical story of the multiplication of languages related to the Tower of Babel, there is a very enlightening Sumerian text, it says that there was a time when people paid homage to Enlil in one language, then instead, the text continues, in summer, Shuber and Maisie they started to speak many languages because the gods master changed their words, putting in their mouths a confused language whereas at first the language of humanity was unique. 3200 BC the city of Uruk, the biblical Eric, appears to be already structured. According to traditional histories, Sumerians settle in southern Mesopotamia, they are keen in processing metals and divide the territory into city-states. The highest authority is represented by Lugil, great man, the prince sovereign who holds political, religious and military power. The lunar calendar of 12 months is born. They apply the sexagesimal system, dividing the day in 24 hours and the circumference into 360 degrees. 3113 BC After 350 years of chaos, this is the year when Enki restores his African kingdom, imposing Sumerian kings, Mens. The capital is located in Memphis. The Egyptian writing appears already formed and does not undertake any variation for centuries thanks to the easy means used to write feathers on papyrus, whereas the original cuneiform Sumerian writing had to evolve to meet the difficulties represented by the clay support. The similarity between these two languages implies that they derive from a single stem or have shared a later phase of development. 3000 to 2000 A ziggurat built in the city of Kish in summer belongs to this period. The city of Uruk hosts the first parliament, known in history. It consists of two rooms, assembly of seniors and assembly of citizens suitable for weapons. There appear the first clay tablets with cunea from Sumerian writing that will acquire, with Akkadian, Assyrian and Babylonian Semitics, as much importance as Greek and Latin had and will have on the Western European culture to the third millennium belongs to an Akkadian seal depicting the solar system made of 12 bodies, sun, moon and 10 other planets, currently we only know 9 of them. Also, the heroic deeds of the legendary Chinese Emperor Huang Ti date to the third millennium. The emperor was endowed with special knowledge and powers, he taught the inhabitants of the basin of the Huang He, the Yellow River, in North China, all useful knowledge for a civil life. He built 12 mirrors with an unknown material. 
miraculous tripods, that emitted sounds and voices and recalled, the dragons flying in the clouds that could stand still or move, become heavy or light were used to communicate at a distance. In the land of Huangti there worked, metal creatures, able to fly, with detachable heads, who ate minerals. Huang Ti's life was very long, as well as his mates, more than 2,000 years. When traveling, these individuals produced thunder. 2,900 to 2,600 BC These are the years of the early Stonehenge. In 2,900 BC Gilgamesh reigns at Uruk, the biblical Eric, in summer, as the most early Sumerian kings, was son of a god and a mortal. In Crete, Minoan civilization was establishes and runs into 1400 BC. At Lagash, Summer, Sargon is the first member of NC's dynasty, NC, righteous master, local governor, that will last for about 650 years. 2800 BC the civilization of the Indus Valley begins to form, whose territory, the third region, had been entrusted to the government of Inanna slash Ishtar, the cities of Harappa and Moenjo Daro, indeed, worshipped a single female deity. In summer, according to traditional history, it is recorded the infiltration of Semitic people and the separation between political and religious powers. Misilim of Kish becomes the great king.